to achieve a goal, you need to develop an effective plan. This not only helps to increase your chances of success, but can also help you to avoid negative consequences that often go unanticipated. In situations or professions that are risky or high stakes, this can be vital. Given how important a plan can be for success, I want to cover three things. One, overconfidence and how it can negatively impact your plan. Two, I'm going to provide you with a cognitive tool that you can use to address overconfidence. And then three, we will go through a quick example so that you can learn how to use the tool. Defined, overconfidence is an inflated or unwarranted belief that your plan will be successful. In considering this definition, we can point to scientific research on concepts such as my side bias, attribution error, optimism bias, and the planning fallacy among others. In each case, some degree of overconfidence leads to errors in judgment. To try and correct for overconfidence, there are a number of different tools available. These include things such as playing devil's advocate, red teams, or using a pros and cons list. But today, I want to introduce you to a tool that has a proven track record of success, the pre-mortem. The pre-mortem is a cognitive tool developed by research psychologist Dr. Gary Klein. A good way to think about a pre-mortem is being the counter opposite of a post-mortem. Whereas a post-mortem is conducted after death, a pre-mortem is conducted while the patient is still alive. Besides being an easy tool to use, there is evidence that shows that a pre-mortem is more effective than other methods. In a study published in 2010, the pre-mortem was compared to four alternatives. Using 178 participants split into five groups, the pre-mortem significantly outperformed other conditions, successfully reducing unwarranted confidence. Using a pre-mortem is a five-step process. In step one, people are provided a copy of the plan. Once familiar with the plan, a meeting is then held as you move to step two. In the second step, the leader does a quick recap of the plan and then declares that the plan has failed. This is important. Imagining failure promotes a mental shift that targets overconfidence. With the plan declared a failure, each person then takes two minutes to write down reasons the plan failed. In step three, the leader starts by announcing one reason for failure. You then go around the table with each person providing a single reason. The cycle continues until all failures have been uncovered. In step four, each person then takes two minutes to write down potential fixes. Like in the third step, the leader presents a fix and then goes around the room until all ideas are on the table. Last, in step five, having identified failures and fixes, the leader takes all of the feedback and revises the plan. Let's give it a quick try. In step one, I present you with the following. You are going on a camping trip with several members of a local wilderness club. The main goal is to hike to the top of a scenic outcrop, reaching the top by sunrise on Sunday. Arriving Friday afternoon, we will hike in and sleep at the first campsite. On Saturday, we will spend the day hiking to the second campsite. Early Sunday, around 4 a.m., we will begin the last leg of our adventure. This will get us to the top half an hour before the sun comes up. In step two, we hold a short meeting before the trip. I recap the plan and then inform you that it is Sunday morning and we have failed. We did not reach the top by sunrise. Why? If you can think of a reason, leave it in the comments and see what others came up with as well. On to step three. It's time to share and consolidate our ideas. Given that it is my plan, I'll start. I announce that we failed because we lose cell service. We lose GPS and become lost. I then turn to Bob, a fellow club member. He offers that we don't make it to the top because at 4 a.m. we are not prepared for the last leg. It is still dark outside as we try to pack up and we become delayed. What's the reason you came up with? Now it's time to address the failures as we move to step four. After giving everyone two minutes to work independently, we once again go around the table. My failure, becoming lost, can be reduced by taking a compass and a map with us. 
With Bob's failure, we can establish a buddy system, pairing up to make sure that everyone is awake by 4 a.m. And we can make sure that we each bring a flashlight. What are some additional ways that we might fix these failures? What about a fix for the failure you came up with? Leave any ideas you might have in the comments, but keep in mind, the main purpose of the premortem is to help reduce overconfidence, not necessarily to have a fix for every potential issue. Now, in the final step, step five, we will use the insights gained in the previous steps to revise or modify our plan. Keeping our example in mind, I'm now going to share a few common mistakes people make when using a premortem. One. Instead of declaring that the plan has failed, asking what might go wrong. This is not the same thing. What might go wrong does not trigger the same mental shift required to explore failure. Two, no sense of urgency. Make sure to limit the discussion of failures or fixes to only a few minutes. Avoid becoming distracted by one element or aspect of the plan. Three, asking for volunteers. If a person is in the group, then they must participate in the process. There are no observers when using a pre-mortem. This helps avoid a free rider effect. 4. Not taking turns. Make sure that each person presents only one failure or one fix at a time. This helps to ensure that everyone will have some degree of ownership in the process. 5. Not having a leader or facilitator. One person must take overall responsibility for the plan and keep everyone focused, develop a sense of urgency, and drive the process. To end the video, I want to encourage you to go ahead and schedule your very first pre-mortem using a short-term goal. Do it now. Put it on your to-do list. To give it a try, focus on something that you want to achieve within the next three months. If you want any additional help or have any questions about how to use the premortem, visit the link in the description and send me a message. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to subscribe before you go, and thanks for stopping by.